So, um, this is a little card system, um, just to give you kind of an idea, like major manufacturing plants have these. You can only buzz in five minutes before your shift actually starts. So you have to just walk by, swipe it, and make sure it like beeps and says you're checked in, that type of thing. Um, what else systems do they have? They have, uh, let's see, where's my cursor at? Or not. Let's see, where's the next picture? Come on. All right, so, uh, next one. Uh, this is a super old school punch system. They used to have these at the school here, which I thought was hilarious. Uh, you have a little time card, you put it through the machine, and it punches whatever time you were in, whatever time you're out. And then nowadays, it's all electronic. Uh, for me, for as a teacher here, which is really funny because I'm on annual salary, I still have to punch in electronically. <laughs> Wrap your head around that. Why do I? And that's yes, yeah, not my example, but that's the idea. But I have to punch in, even though I'm not paid hourly. Yeah, I can't figure that one out yet. So um, some some employers just want to keep you accountable for time you get here. That I think that's what they do. But um, but yeah, so uh, that's kind of the system. Um, our school has moved to the punching system, so like our custodial staff or um, our, our kitchen workers, you know, anyone that's not a, an actual educator, uh, like Mrs. Bumberg and the um, principal and sec uh, secretaries, they have to punch in and they're paid hourly. So, um, but teachers are not the system that they have here. So, um, it's one of those things like you don't really think about it until your job has to deal with it. Um, some jobs, like if you forget to punch in, you get like three times and then you're fired. Um, there's a place over in Clear Lake, McKesson, it's like a pharmaceutical plant where they ship. You miss three punches, you're out and you're gone and see it. So, you kill. Um, there's certain places of business, like I worked at Larson Manufacturing in Clear Lake, that's where they make all those phone doors. Um, you had to punch in exactly five minutes before your shift started and not a minute before. So, you had 400 employees staying at the door, like swiping as they could buy as fast as they could. So, like that's not a system, it just doesn't work that way. So, but it's one of those things like you don't really think about it until you have to deal with it, with a job that you get paid per hour. Um, if you're if you're in a job where you just kind of keep your own log, your own hours, I'd say for you guys, since you're so tech savvy, just get an app that will do it for you. Like you can literally have apps you just punch in, punch out, and it'll log your hours, and you can just email them the spreadsheet, and it'll just do it for you. Um, you can set up a Google form or whatnot. Some people do that, but yeah, with you guys, with technology age, you guys are at, you can pretty much have an app that'll just take care of it for you. Um, but goal today was talk about those hourly rates one more time, because I know you had you had an assignment yesterday that was page two, page three. That's what due tomorrow. Did everyone receive an email from me this morning? I sent out like kind of early this morning. Just remind you, I try to do that the day before. I don't know what time I sent out, but it's usually during the school day. But I'll try to remind you, like, hey, homework's due tomorrow. Uh, your book covers due tomorrow, so get the book covers on there. So that's what I'll do tomorrow. Uh, I think most of you were almost done with the assignment yesterday. Some of you actually did turn it in already, but um, I'll give you some time at the very end of class today. My goal is to do about 15 minutes worth of notes, and then give you about 10 minutes for you work. That's what I want to do. That way, you always have time in class to ask me questions to get a refresher because you may not remember what we did yesterday or how to do that. So. Um, the goal today is to talk about hourly rate, but also talk about the programs and the, the, the math that's actually involved in the punch in punch out system. Um, because if you ever had to do this by hand, which I've had to do before, because I was a farm hand for a long time for some farmers, um, you have to actually calculate everything out by hand. And that is a pain in the butt unless you know what you're doing. So, um, so yeah, so let's talk about this. So let's say you're on a job, you, uh, you work, uh, let's say, nine to five, right? You're a nine to five kind of person, but you have to punch out at lunch, right? And you can take lunch whenever you want, um, but you have to punch out at some point, come back an hour later, you know, and punch back in, that type of thing. So um, let's say you, you punched in at uh, nine on the dot, you worked until 11.30, you punched back in at 12.30, and you worked until five. Let's say that that's, that's kind of your, that's your job. Well, the idea is that if you want to know the total amount of hours that you work, you can count with your fingers. That's probably the easiest. Or if they get really messy numbers, like, because obviously this person has punched in exactly at 9 o'clock, but what if you punched in at like 9.03 or 9.02 and you punched out at 11.37? 
those are the things we need to talk about because employers, like no joke, they pay you per minute, per second. Especially like um, our custodial staff, when they punch in, it goes by the millisecond they punched in. And that's how they're paid on their paycheck. So it's one of those things like, you do have to worry about. And you have to actually keep track. I know that there's electronic systems, but they mess up all the time. I don't understand how many times um, we've had employees that like were short uh, you know, an hour worth of work because the program messed it up. So you have to keep track of those hours yourself. Well, this is an easy one, right? If I was counting this out by hand, right? I'm going, you know, 9 to 10, that's one hour. 10 to 11, that's one hour. And then 11 to 11.30. So there's a half an hour. So right now, we're going to work two and a half hours. Like, that's just how I think about it in my head. That's just the easiest way to do it. I won't even need to write that down. I just count. Okay, 10 to 11, 11 to 30. 11, you know, two and a half hours. Then over here, 12.30 to 1.30, there's one hour. 1.30 to 2.30, there's an hour. 2.30 to 3.30, there's another hour. 3.30 to 4.30, there's another hour. And then you got a half an hour again, 4.30 to 5. So, so far in this day, you're going... You know, one, two, three, four, five, six total hours and another hour, so you're working a seven hour day. There's your punch perfectly, seven hours. That makes sense to people. Like, you wouldn't have to write that down, you can just count your fingers and figure that out. Does that make sense to you? The concept of hours. Okay, let's get to the stupid, messy one now. Let's get to the one with the, that it's a nightmare trying to figure it out. You punched in, 902. You punched out at um, 11:37, um, and let's just do this first one. Let's say, like, let's say you're, it was just Friday, you just had to work in the morning. Okay, so this is my example now. So if I was doing this, this is morning to morning, right? 9 a.m. to 11:37 a.m. This is easy, right? It's when it gets messy is when you suddenly go to the afternoon and you go like noon to four o'clock. Now you're in the messy time frame because noon, that 12, is a bigger number than 4 o'clock. And trying to do what I'm about to show you doesn't compute right. So you have to change almost to military time so that it makes sense. So if I was doing this, and this is just morning, this is and and, this is literally how I write it down. I would just literally subtract like algebra 1 or general math days back in you know, junior high when you used to subtract old school. Right, I would do column method, stack. When you subtract, you just subtract straight down. And you literally just do it like normal. 7 minus 2. 5. 3 minus 0. 11 minus 9. 2 hours and 35 minutes. Boom, done. That's easy. That's stupidly simple, right? That's not hard. The problem is, it's when you start doing this. Okay, so I'm going to do a new example here. Same concept. Now let's do it when we get messy in the afternoon now. So you, you punched out at 12.37 and, and you, uh, or you punched in at 12.37 and you punched out at 4.21. No, no, let's go more. Let's go 4.45, let's do that. Let's make it a little bit more. Let's say that this is, this is your time. That's afternoon to afternoon. That's the afternoon time. You cannot just stack and do this. You can't do that. And you can't do this either. It's 37. Like, those don't work. Here's the reason why. If you try to do this one, what's the difference between 12 and 4? If you subtracted 12 minutes for was that eight hours? You didn't work eight hours in the afternoon. You worked like four. So you can't do it that one. That doesn't work. Over here, the four is smaller than 12. You can't subtract that either. So like, these don't work, right? You can't do the simple column method. You have to go to military time. So if you're in the afternoon, you have to add 12 to the, the later time. So not this one. Not It's afternoon. So like 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. Add 12 to it. 
That's, that's how you go to a 24-hour clock military time. So if I add 12 to this, this is now 1645. Now we can do the math here. Now you can do the whole thing where you stack them on top of each other. I always put the later part in the day on top. So if you switch to military time, now it works out nice and pretty. Now you can actually subtract old school like just column method. Okay. Does this make sense so far how I'm doing that? Military time in the afternoon, past noon. Okay, so now to do this, to subtract, the time number has to be bigger. Is five bigger than seven? So now, so you're going to borrow. So I'm going to borrow uh, from the minute, making this now a 15. So if you borrow from the minute, just carry a one over. What's 15 minus seven? 15 minus seven. Eight. Eight, thank you. Okay, three minus three. Zero. Zero. 16, or sorry, four. six minus two is four. One minus one doesn't work. You work four hours and eight minutes. Now, some people can count with their fingers. What I mean by that, if you wanted to go that old school route that I did earlier, 12.37 to 1.37, 1.37 to 2.37, you know, 2.37 to 3.37, or 3.37 to 4.37, and then your eight minutes to make up to 12.45. Some people will just do it by hand. I'd say the easiest way is to stack them, go count them. All right, questions, comments about what I just did there? Easy, does it make sense? Okay, requires that you have a column method. Okay, last, this is my last example, no joke. Last example, no use entire time report here. All right, last, last part, I'm gonna do the afternoon thing again. Uh, let's say, okay, let's do this. Let's go, um, let's go, you punched out at 11.58. Or punched in at 11:58. This is the afternoon time, right? So you've already taken your lunch up to them, uh, and then you're punching out at let's go with 3:30. Punching out at 3:30 in the afternoon. So this is the morning. This is a.m. That's me. You can count with your fingers again. 11:58 to 12:58, to 1:58, 1:58 to 2:58, 2:58 to 3:58, and you just kind of count up from there. Okay. And you get your, you know, your hours in. Or change to military time since it's the afternoon. Add 12 to it, so that makes 15:30. 11:58 in the morning. That goes earlier time goes here. At this point, this is the goofy part. Can I subtract zero minus eight? No. And I can't even go the three minus the five either because the numbers are too small. So this is the goofy part that I haven't talked about. If you ever need to borrow from the hours, borrow one from the hour, make this 14. How many minutes are in an hour? 60. You have to add 60 to this. You don't want to add a one, don't make it 13. You have to add 60, and that's the part that always gets people. So this now becomes, if you add 60 to this, this now just became 90. So it's 1490 now, and then you can subtract straight down. So I can borrow from this, I can add an 8, make this a 10, because if you borrow minutes, you can always carry ones. Hours, you can't, you have to borrow 16s. So 10 minus 8 is 2, 8 minus 5 is 3, 4 minus 1 is 3, and there you go, so it's 3 hours and 32 minutes, that type of thing. Which makes sense, some people can just count that in their head. Because you went up from basically noon to three, that's three hours, and two minutes to make it to three thirty. So. Okay, does that make sense? The concept of borrowing hours. We're going to practice this more tomorrow. I'll probably have you do a couple of examples of that tomorrow. Um, again, this is part of the hours thing. That if you had to add hours together and then do an hourly rate, like this is how many hours you're working, and then you'll have to convert that. That's the part we're going to look at tomorrow. Like, how do I actually calculate what my pay is? Because I work three hours and 32 minutes. What's the pay? Okay. All right. We're good so far? Okay. Today, that's it. You have the rest time, which is about 14, 15 minutes. I want to give you time where I can work on the page two, page three. If you know you're done, finish complete. Or you want to say that? You can work wherever you need to. You can relax. You can work. I want to give you some time in case you did not get that done. Get it finished. Get it wrapped up. 
book covers. Book covers do more. I don't care if you do the little Ivy Family food bag. If you want to do the little sake thing, um, get the cover on it by tomorrow. Okay. It could be a little paper, um, almost newspaper looking thing. That's great. That covers a book. I just need something on there. It's 10 points. It's all or nothing. So, there you go.